What's up, Legacy Builders? I'm Rob. I'm Rishon. And, and this, this is, is Learn, Learn Hustle, Hustle Grow. Grow. Learn Hustle Grow is all about creating a legacy. We're here sharing our passions for money, marriage, and travel with other legacy builders like you. you. We live in a world of instant gratification. We don't have to wait for anything in the United States of America. Credit cards make it possible to have whatever we want right now. Unfortunately, those banks want their money back. Most of us become interested in personal finance once we realize there's no money left at the end of the month. For some of us, it reaches the point where we don't even want to open our mail. We know that those envelopes contain bills that we cannot pay. How does it get that bad? Any of this sound familiar? When I signed up for that credit card, I got a great discount. Man, I really needed those kicks. When I checked my account, the money was there. I had to fly home for the reunion. I haven't seen those folks in years. You only live once. I didn't plan on getting sick. I can't afford health insurance. We deserved an opportunity to get away. It was our anniversary. Then there are bills that must be paid like rent, car note, and food, but the rest of it will have to wait. Maybe you're thinking, I should see a financial advisor. Well, that depends. Do you have a surplus of funds? Financial advisors work for people who have money to invest. If you are watching this, you are likely in one of two camps. You make good money and don't know where it's going, or you don't make enough money to accommodate your lifestyle. Would it surprise you to know that there are people with MBAs in finance who struggle to manage their own money? If a degree doesn't make you an expert, how do you begin to understand money? You can do this. Start by looking at what you're spending. That's right, you have to track your spending. There's no way around it. The good thing is that it's really easy to do. You can use either your bank or credit card spending report feature. You can also use a third-party app like Mint or Personal Capital. Both are free apps that allow you to connect all of your accounts. They're very useful if you have multiple credit cards and checking accounts. Spending reports present the data in numbers and nice pie charts. Take a look at where you're spending the most. What surprises you? If you eat out, you might be surprised at what you're spending on restaurant food. You might also be surprised by the miscellaneous and uncategorized expenses. If you go to the ATM often, the amount of cash you withdraw could be a real shocker. There are some people who think withdrawing cash is a way to save money. This is only the case if you are not using credit cards or debit cards. There are two savings accounts that are essential at every stage of building wealth, your 401k and your emergency savings. We know that there are those who say you should stop saving for retirement until you are debt free. We disagree with this statement. Paying off your debt can take years. You are losing the benefits of market performance and employer match. You are not getting any younger. You cannot finance your retirement. For that reason, you have to pay yourself first. Save 5% of your salary in a 401k or employer equivalent. Put $1,000 into an emergency savings account. The emergency savings is just that. This $1,000 will take the place of your credit card. Getting your finances in order will take some serious adulting. You have to define your emergency. That means getting clear on the difference between a need and a want. It also means being able to tell yourself no. Remember, not now does not mean never. Don't get derailed by a medical emergency. Health insurance is critical at every stage of life. Make sure you're covered. Automate your 401k savings using your employer's online portal. In addition to saving for retirement, a 401k also reduces your tax burden. The remaining 95% will be used to pay off debt and cover your living expenses. Next, evaluate your top three expenses. In most households, it's housing, transportation, and food. Can you reduce these costs? Here are a few ideas. Housing. Could you move into a less expensive apartment or neighborhood? 
When's the last time you got a quote on your homeowner's insurance? Could you get a roommate? Maybe two. Hmm, how about moving in with family? Transportation. If you move closer to work, then you can save money on gas, tolls, and time. Also, when was the last time you got an auto insurance quote? If you are focused on building wealth, a car note can impede your progress. Sell the car and get a reliable cash vehicle. Food is an area where we can have a big impact. How much are you eating out? Can you cut that in half? No time to make lunch? Meal prep enough for at least three days to reduce lunch spending. Too tired to cook dinner? Start the crock pot before you leave for work. Hard to cook for one? Share or swap meals with a friend or neighbor. Need a social life? Take turns hosting a monthly potluck with friends. There's no easy way to say this. You have to stop spending. You have to change your old habits. What you have in your closet has to be enough. No new clothes, shoes, or electronics. All travel must be put on hold. If you are looking for more ideas on ways to save money, check out our videos. This is only temporary. You are in the process of building wealth. You can do this. We know it's hard not to spend anything. If you're a spender, then this might seem impossible. Your spending must be reduced to a monthly allowance. The decision to implement an allowance was a game changer for us. Prior to getting married, we both had grown accustomed to managing our money the way we saw fit. Knowing we had spending money made it easier to work together. We applied the bulk of our funds toward necessities, savings, investing, and giving. So, how much do you get for your allowance? Set aside 5% of your monthly income for non-essentials. Before you say, oh my God, there's no way this is enough, remember, this is the exact amount you are saving in your 401k. Ask yourself, does it really make sense to spend more on anything else other than your future? If you can spend less than 5%, even better. The time has come to take a closer look at your lifestyle. We have a tendency to spend more when we earn more. This is called lifestyle creep. Before we know it, wants become needs. Stop trading up your phone. Monthly cell phone bills for a family have increased from $100 to over $500. Get yourself a pay for device. Dining out, entertainment, and gifts are limited to your allowance. Give family and close friends a heads up regarding your desire to be debt free. Even if they aren't on board, they need to respect your decision. Personal care and hobbies must also be covered by your allowance. For example, Haircut for me, pedicure for my wife. You're putting your spending on hold until you can pay off your debt. The more focused and disciplined you are, the faster you will reach your goal. You have cut your expenses and reduced your spending. Somehow, you still don't make enough to achieve your goals. Sometimes you just need more money. We understand and we have a few suggestions. Start with earning more money on your primary job. We have an entire video on the topic of career hacking. This video covers the topics of getting a raise and career advancement. Start selling. Most Americans have more than enough stuff. Thankfully, the internet makes it easy to sell anything. It's time to purge your home. If you have a storage facility, everything must go. Side hustles. What skills do you have? Can you start an online business? Need ideas? Explore YouTube and the podcast app on your phone. There are podcasts for just about anything that interests you. There are quite a few on the topic of side hustles. Let's talk about debt. We've already suggested selling the car. If you can't sell it for whatever reason, you have to include it in your debt pay down. You've increased your income and sold miscellaneous items. Apply all of your increase towards high interest debt. Choose the method that works best for you. If you are motivated by quick wins, choose the debt snowball method. Pay the minimum balance on all debts and anything extra goes on the smallest debt. Motivated by paying less interest? 
Choose the avalanche method. Pay the minimum balance on all debts. Anything extra goes towards the debt with the highest interest rate. We paid off our student loans according to the lender schedule. If you're overwhelmed by student loan debt, you can use the debt snowball or avalanche method on those two. So when do you get to invest outside of your retirement accounts? Yes, if you're going to build wealth, your money has to work for you. We invest in both real estate and the stock market. Both options involve some risk. We are comfortable with those risks because we have taken the time required to educate ourselves. With that in mind, your first investment should be in yourself. Invest in your own education. Read books, listen to podcasts, take online classes. We are working on our first ebook and online course. Watch for announcements on all forms of social media. Can you invest with debt? Sure you can. Do you have an income surplus or savings that will cover your expenses in case of a loss? If not, an investment gone wrong can land you in deeper debt and filled with regret. Those are our recommendations on how to manage money while building wealth. Are you paying off debt? Have you increased your income in the process? Do you have an allowance? Did we miss anything? If you have questions, now's the time to ask. We want to hear from you. Leave comments below. See, See you in the, the next video. video.